Alright James, welcome back from your sleep study. So I was able to gather all of the data um, in order to visualize your results and see what best methods we can take to start improving your quality of sleep. So it does look like unfortunately you're having some trouble sleeping. Um, during your sleep study you woke up about eight times throughout the night, which is what we would consider um, outside of normal limits. So typically a person will wake up one to two times outside of their REM cycle and you did wake up significantly more than that. Um, so I think part of the problem is the light that you said was coming into your room at night. So unfortunately, even with the blinds closed and with the curtains closed, you are still getting in some outside light. So that's definitely something I'd like to address. Um, as well as your inability to kind of get into a restful mind state. So you've been having some trouble kind of turning your mind off. So that's something else that I would like to look into. So I would like to thank Manta Sleep for sponsoring this portion of the video. So I have several products here that we will be getting you fitted for, a custom fit for a sleep mask as well as a sound mask. And these are all things that are going to help improve your quality of sleep overall, okay? So we appreciate Manta, we enjoy working with them and we are very grateful that they continue to support our channel. So I'm going to start by having you pick out a couple of things here. So I have the mask that we're going to get you fitted for. Now I also have some Manta Aroma Dots and essentially these are very small, um, kind of felt like texture essential oil patches. So they will be fitted in your mask and again it's just going to help induce that sleep state. So. I have a couple different aromas here that I would like you to choose from. So I have lavender, bergamot, and eucalyptus. Do either of those sound enticing to you? Is there one that you would maybe like to smell? Mm, lavender. Lavender? Okay. So lavender is a very popular choice because it will help get you in the right frame of mind. So these are just very convenient, ready to go aromatherapy patches, and they do come with a small holder that you can use and it will just velcro to your mask okay so they smell lovely so you can probably smell it from there it is pretty potent and they do last several nights um, so essentially we would just place the disc in the holder and then that velcros directly to your mask and it is very effective okay so I will go ahead and send you home with a 10 pack of the lavender aroma dots so I'll be sure to include that in your package today now. So I do want to go ahead and get you fitted for your mask, okay? So I've picked out two different masks for you. Now I think that the sound mask is going to be our best bet. And my reason for that is this mask is equipped with Bluetooth capability. So because you said you were having trouble kind of getting in that restful mind state that allows you to go to sleep, this mask is going to allow you to play sounds, play music, soundscapes. Um, a lot of my patients listen to ASMR videos. You can play fan sounds. Um, there are meditation links that you can also listen to and all of that will be capable with this mask. So. I'm going to go ahead and get you fitted for this. I also have some specialty cups that we will place in here. Um, so let me take your measurements so that we can ensure you are getting the most customized fit. So I'm just going to have you straighten your head for me now. I'm just going to take a couple different measurements here. Make sure that we are ensuring an adequate Fit so you have the most comfortable night's sleep. Now the eye cups are fully adjustable and customizable to your face and to your preference. So the good news is that regardless of the mask that we end up choosing for you, the experience is fully customizable and the fabric is extremely high quality so it's very breathable and it does have aerated pockets to allow for maximum airflow still allowing for that complete blackout feature so you will not be able to see any light peeking through the mask and that is one of the benefits of going with Manta. The high quality products allow for the most precise fit and sleep quality. Okay, so I just want to see how far apart to space your eye cup.
now Amanda Sleep is pro-nap, so I would like to encourage you to join the pro-nap movement. And essentially that means allowing yourself to rest as needed. So in today's society, we tend to put pressure on hustle culture and essentially working yourself to the bone, but Amanda Sleep likes to encourage its users to rest whenever necessary. So I just like you to keep that in mind. Don't stress. Allow yourself to engage in a restful mind state. Okay, so those measurements, I'm just going to adjust your mask here. And I do just want to note, because I will be sending you home with both eye cup options. So the pro cups are tapered at the edge. So they have a tapered end here as to not occlude um, the bone structure. So it allows for a very comfortable sleep. I know you mentioned you were a side sleeper. So the benefit to this is that it's perfectly tapered here. So when you're sleeping on your side, you are not putting any um, pressure on that temporal region there, okay? And along with that, the masks are also designed so that they do not put any pressure on the eyelid itself. So as you can see, when I place this on your eye, you should be able to fully open your eye without your lashes touching the mask at all. And that is a feature that is exclusive to Mantis Sleep, so we love that. Sometimes people are against or averse to using eye masks because they don't like the sensation of touching of anything touching their eyes. So it's a really good quality about these masks as well as the fabric itself. So luckily these have fully customizable and adjustable Bluetooth components. So I'm going to be measuring your ear in comparison to the Bluetooth component and then we can adjust this precisely here. Okay, so let's just see. Bluetooth components adjusted to where I think it'll fit you best. Now, I also want to send you home with the cool eye cup option. Now, these are a little bit different. So, the texture is that of kind of like a small bean bag. Um, they are very cooling, so there's a cooling gel on the outside, so they are cool to the touch. Even upon wearing them for several hours, they remain cool and they are slightly weighted, which a lot of my patients find to be extremely relaxing. So I'm gonna place this over your eye and I'd like you to tell me how that feels. Feels good. So you can see that they kind of instantaneously have this relaxing effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the cool eye cups in your sound mask. And as with all Manta cups, these are fully adjustable. So once we get them fitted to your precise measurement, I'm going to go ahead and place this on your face. So I'll help you lift your head for me. Perfect. Okay. Okay, you can go ahead and relax. Now you shouldn't feel any occlusion of your nares, so your nose should be completely open here and not obstructed whatsoever. It does appear that the cups are placed properly and that I can see them both at the top and at the bottom. And the Bluetooth component is in line with your ears, which is great. So I'm going to play a, a short sound and I want you to tell me if you can hear this in the appropriate place, okay? Are you able to hear that in both ears? Yes. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yes, it does. Okay. So go ahead and turn off the sound component. Okay. And I'm going to manipulate the mask slightly from side to side. I have an overhead lamp here. 
and you should not be able to see any of this light. So there are no areas of light that are peeking through as far as I can tell. Are you able to see any light on either side? And if I manipulate the mask here just slightly, can you see any light there? Okay. Can you turn your head towards me? Can you see any light on either side? Turn your head away from me. Can you see any light on either side? Bring your head to your chin. Any light there at the top? Okay. Any light there at the bottom? Oh, perfect. Okay. So they are fully blacked out, which is good news. And how are the weight of those eye cups? That feels okay for you? That's great. Perfect, okay. So again, like I said, the, the texture of the fabric here is extremely breathable. So I do just want to go ahead and take a couple ranges of your temperature here through the mask so I can verify that there are in fact no hot spots and that it is allowing for breathability through and through. I'm getting an average temperature of about 92.3 through the mask, which is completely normal. So it is typical that it would be lower, especially given that these are the cooling eye cups. So that is what we want to see. That is great news. So essentially just ensures that you will not feel warm with this on your face, okay? So I'm gonna have you lift your head for me. I'll go ahead and take this off. Okay. I'm also going to send you home today with the Manta Pro mask, okay? So this is the mask that I use nightly when I'm not using the sound mask. Um, I do also prefer this one for travel just because it is more lightweight and it's very easy to pack. So I would recommend keeping this one at your side. It's always good to have a second option. This one is also fully customizable and adjustable as well. So it has the Velcro at the back and this one does come fitted with the same tapered pro cups here so tapered on the side you won't have to worry about side sleeping you can also sleep on your stomach and the mask should stay in place okay so i will send you home with both of these options as well as both sets of eye cups and i'm going to go ahead and send you home with the lavender aroma dots i will send you home with a couple of the other ones to try out as well okay so i would like to see you back here in a couple weeks I would like you to wear the mask consistently for at least 14 days and then we'll come back and reassess and I would think that your sleep should be improved once we redo your sleep study. Okay? okay. All right, James. So I will go ahead and have my nurse Sarah get this packed up for you. Um, so she will go ahead and have that ready for you up at the reception's desk. Someone should be in to escort you out shortly as my new patient is coming in. So no rush, I'll allow you to gather your belongings. So I will have nurse Sarah get all of this packed up for you in your Manta bag. So it'll come with a mesh holding bag, one for each mask. Okay. And once again, I would like to thank Manta Sleep for sponsoring today's video. If any of our viewers would like to receive 10% off their purchase at mantasleep.com, they can do so by following the link in the description box as well as in the pinned comment. Again, we are so thankful for continuing to work with Mantis Sleep and we look forward to future collaborations with them. All right, Miss Jen, we are gonna go ahead and get started with your examination today. So I have that you are in for a complete abdominal assessment as well as an in-depth back exam. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So it looks like you've been keeping up with your regular appointments, but this one is about midway through the year, so this is an earlier appointment than normal. Um, it looks like I have in your notes that you've been experiencing a little bit of abdominal bloating as well as some lower back pain, so it looks like we're just kind of doing a roll-off to see what's going on today. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I'm sorry to hear about that. Let's see if we can't figure out what exactly is wrong. Okay. So I just have a couple questions that I'm going to ask you. That way we can maybe get an idea and then the rest of the examination will be very physical. So you will be having a look at your abdominal cavity um, about halfway through, I'll have you turn over and then I'll have a look at your back, okay? Okay. All right, dear, so can you tell me how you're feeling right now? Um, for the most part, okay. Okay. Still feeling a little bit of discomfort there? Very little, but I didn't really eat today, so. 
Okay. Are you in any pain? Mm, no. No. Okay. Okay. Are you experiencing any abdominal bloating? Very minimal right now. Okay. Just because you've not eaten. Right. Yet. Okay. Okay. Any nausea? No. Okay. Any recent changes to your diet? No, not really. Okay. So it's been about the same. Any abnormal weight loss or weight gain? So none that you've expected, none that you've worked on? No. Okay. Good. Any changes to your medications? No. Are you taking any new supplements? No, just the regular multi. Okay. And good. How's your water intake been? You're getting in enough water? Probably could be better. Okay. So maybe you could work on that a little bit. Do you drink any carbonated beverages throughout the day? Like soda or sparkling water? Once in a while. Okay. And aside from today, since you haven't eaten, how has your normal kind of daily pattern of eating been going? You've been eating three meals a day about? Usually like two with a snack. Two. and get started with your examination. Thank you very much for that information. So I have a couple things that I'm gonna go over and we'll basically just start with a bit of a visual inspection. I am going to put a pair of gloves on here and then I'll start by checking for temperature variations in your abdomen, okay? okay. Alright Jen, so is it okay if I go ahead and lower this? You yeah. can. Perfect. Alright, so I'm just going to start by having a look at your skin. I am going to lower your pants. Okay. So I'm going to start by using my hands to feel for any temperature variations, okay? So my hands might be a little cold, I apologize. It's warm and dry to the touch, which is good. Okay. So I'm just going to use my thermometer gun to make sure that I didn't miss anything. are just a little bit warmer. It looks like most of that is happening in this left lower crotch in here. So any pain or discomfort in this area? No. No. Okay. So just have a little bit of a closer look there. Okay, 
position. So I'm just going to perform a couple palpations here. So you're just going to feel me manipulate with my fingers. Go ahead and relax and you can let me know if any of this causes you any pain. So just starting with a very gentle palpation of mainly the surface of the skin. And I just want to feel around for any abnormalities that I might not be seeing visually. So just using my fingers to palpate here. This area does feel just slightly warmer, but it's not anything that I would say is overtly concerning. So I'm going to feel along your ribs. And this area can feel a little tender, so just let me know if this hurts at all. go ahead and have a visual inspection here. So I'm just going to have a look with my pen light and essentially just looking at the surface and texture of the skin. Okay. So just relax for me. I'm just going to have a look. Also looking at your respirations and noting the rise and fall of your rib cage as well as your chest wall when you're breathing. Respirations up here bilateral and symmetrical. Not seeing any signs of abnormal distension here, which is good. And just looking at this area that was a little bit warmer. Having a look at the skin texture itself, and all of that does appear okay. So skin is very clear. See just a couple of freckles here, and they all appear very normal. So that is good news. And having a brief look at the umbilicus here, it does appear that you have a piercing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that piercing still open and active? No. Not anymore. I'm going to go ahead and go in for a deeper palpation. So this time I'm feeling for your organs as well as your intestines. So I'd like you to just relax for me. I'm just going to push a little bit deeper here. Kind of a gentle but firm pressure. Just making sure that there's nothing internally that can be concerning. So, just gonna press down for a second here. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. So, I'm gonna go have a have a listen here with the stethoscope. So it's going to be just a little bit cold, so just go ahead and take some normal breaths for me. Good. 
all cells are active. That's good. Same here, adequate blood flow, and it does sound as if your digestive tract is working appropriately. Just good news. Let's go ahead and move on, and I think at this point I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of measurements. So you just relax for me. I'm going to take some base measurements for symmetry. So essentially just measuring side to side, ensuring that everything is fairly symmetrical. So nothing is going to be exactly the same side to side, but I do just want to check to make sure that significantly different. Okay. Good. So I'm just going to measure base of the ribs here, about six. About three quarters of an inch by about an inch. take this device here. It is a little bit cold, so I apologize, but this is going to allow me to measure the difference in your rib cage upon respiration. So I'm just gauging That is very good. So I'm just going to measure the length here. Perfect. Okay. Just measuring from the top of the sternum coming down towards the umbilicus. And that appears about even there. So that is great news. measure from hip to hip here. That's about a half. And the widest point here. Just gonna feel around a little bit here. Okay. So 
Just going to use this tool to allow me to stretch the skin slightly. This is going to give me a better indication of the overall elasticity of your skin. So essentially testing for skin turgor and integrity. So just testing for the elastin protein at the surface of the skin by gently stretching certain areas. And then a very gentle drag here. So in line with a similar test, I'm going to use this acupressure tool. For the purposes of this examination, I'm just going to use it to test the depth of your abdominal cavity here. So we have natural fatty deposits in our abdomen, and I'm just testing to see exactly how far this tool will go into your stomach, essentially. And this just allows me to see whether or not you are at a healthy weight and abdominal circumference, which does appear that you are. I'm getting very minimal indentation here. Good. Okay. I'm also going to use this to have a look at the rib cage here. In here. Good. Okay. So I have a series of tools that I would like to use to test for sensory perception. So the first one is more so testing your abdominal reflexes. So I have this kind of wiry brush here, just to give you an example. I'm going to be using this to brush across your abdomen, kind of like this. It's going to be a little bit ticklish if you're a tick ticklish person, um, so I do apologize there, but this is just going to allow me to test the muscles in your stomach, basically, okay? So you don't have to indicate whether or not you can feel it, I'm just looking for a specific response. Very good, so I'm seeing that natural flexing of the muscles there. Tell me whether or not you can feel that this is the same on both sides. So for example, if I touch you here and one side feels different than the other, just let me know. So same thing with this tool. Now this is very sharp. I don't want to alarm you. It's not going to hurt you, but you should feel a sharp sensation. I just would like you to let me know if it feels any different anywhere, okay? So it should feel the same sharpness all the way down. different in any of the areas? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. So next I'm going to 
to touch you with a very soft kind of cotton wisp here. I'd like you to just indicate when you feel it. Um, you can either say yes or just nod your head, okay? Yes. Yes. all of that. Now this last one is quite difficult in that it is very, very small. Um, so you're going to feel a very light sensation here if you are able to feel it. If you're not, that's okay. Um, but just go ahead and indicate yes if you feel it, okay? You feel it all across there. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Any different between this side here and this side here? No. Very good. Okay. Alright, so I'm just going to perform a couple of percussions here. So I have a reflex hammer. You're just going to feel me perform a light tapping of your abdomen, okay? Mm -hmm. Just listening for any audible differences here. Should sound slightly more obtuse on these bonier prominences. Got a smaller hammer here. Just palpating across the sternum here, not noting any difference. Okay, very good. Okay. So just let me know if you feel a vibration sensation here. Does this feel cold to you? Yeah. Okay. Does all of that feel the same coldness? Mm -hmm. And does all of this here feel the same coldness? Mm -hmm. And no difference in how cold it is anywhere? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Alright, so I'm just going to take a quick note here.
shall inspection was awful. No notable nodules. No abnormal moles or lesions of the skin. Respirations appear normal at about 18 per minute. Chest rays and paw as well as abdominal rays and paw are even and bilateral. Stethoscope inspection was normal. Bow sounds are active. Blood flow appears adequate and equal symmetrically. Palpatory exam was well within full limits. There was one small temperature variation in that left lower quadrant. I'm going to make a note of that here, so the lower quadrant is slightly elevated. Okay, abdominal reflexes are well within tongue, so that's good news. No issues there. Sensory perception is normal as well. Measurements are equal bilaterally. And no tenderness upon palpation. Okay. All right, Jen. So as far as your abdominal exam is concerned, given that I didn't find anything with my physical inspection, I'd say that we likely need to start you on an elimination diet. So essentially what that means is I'd like you to start eliminating things from your diet in order to figure out what exactly is upsetting you. So because you don't have any medical allergies, I don't suspect it's anything that you're eating. Um, that you could be allergic to, it's more likely that you have some intolerances. So common intolerance are to wheat, or gluten, dairy, that kind of thing. So what I'd like you to do if possible is to start um, on a very minimalistic diet. Well, when I say the word diet, I don't mean restrictive, it's just um, medical definition of diet essentially is what you're eating. So I will print out some information for you to go by. Um, it's kind of a day one through three and then four, five, and six change up a little bit. So for day one, just to give you an example, it's liquid. So you do clear liquid, broth, tea, water, that kind of thing. Um, day two, you can move up just slightly. So um, kind of the rice diet. So rice, oatmeal, bananas, applesauce. Day three, I want you to move up to a plain protein. So then you can add in plain chicken, plain fish, that kind of thing. No red meat just yet. Um, and then on day four is when you're going to start to add in the things that are common intolerances. So we're going to add in one at a time. Um, so day four, you'll add in eggs and then an acid. So you'll add in eggs and then something like apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, lime juice, that kind of thing. Day five, I want you to add in dairy. So cheese, yogurt, milk. Day six, we're not going to do anything different. Now keep in mind that this is variegated, so for every day you can have what you had on the previous day as well, okay? So day six, we're not going to do anything different, and um, up until day seven, you can add in one new thing a day. Um, I would like you to take notes. Do note down anything that you think is causing you any discomfort, so if you add in red meat and you feel like you had a headache that day or you feel like you were bloated that day, that is notable, okay? So again, I will have all this information printed out for you, and then you can document that as well in your patient portal. Um, and then day 14, I would like to have you back so that we can go over everything and see if there was any sensitivities. If you don't find anything and you're still not sure what's causing it, I would like to do some sensitivity testing where we'll do some blood work, we'll do a buccal swab, and we'll kind of rule things out further, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to have a look at your back. That way I can see what's going on, okay? okay. All right, Jen, so now that I have you turned over, we can go ahead and get started with your back examination. So let's start with just a visual inspection here. So just having a look at your back, just assessing the different areas that are visible to me. So having a look at your skin, skin texture as well as skin color. Just looking for any signs of possible abnormality here. Noting any freckles or moles, which I do see several freckles, but those are all completely normal. Nothing so far looks concerning. So I'm just going to lower this just slightly here. So just going to have a 
have a look at your lower back where you said you were having some of that discomfort. So I do notice a tattoo here that I will have a look at. Let's see a small freckle here. Okay. Just gonna have a look with my light. Okay. Just gently stretching the skin as I have a look. distension, no notable edema, looking for any possible signs of infection related to your tattoo, which is not present. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the scapula. vertebrae in the back of your neck. Okay. Okay. Good. No signs of swelling here. I'm just going to feel for the individual discs in your back. For any signs of abnormal distension or any possible bulging. Just gonna pay some special attention here to the lower back, feeling around your spine. Any abnormal curvature, any possible signs of scoliosis. Since you said you were having pain in the lower back. various areas with the back of my hand here, feeling for any temperature abnormalities. So look at this tattoo. Okay. So just let me look at the perimeter here. Okay. So it does 
appear to have healed very well. I'm not seeing any signs of abnormal scarring. So as far as the skin integrity, everything is intact. Doesn't appear as if there are any signs of infection. I'm not noting any abnormal bleeding of the ink or anything that can indicate a cause of concern here. Skin is slightly distended and that is normal. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple measurements here, so you just relax for me. So I just want to feel, just want to get a feel for symmetry here, so just checking. inches from tailbone to shoulder and this side. Okay, so this side is about the same. That's great. And then if I do from the nape of your neck down directly over the center of your back. going to measure directly over your spine. Okay, so there are six points. Oh, 14 inches there. Go with the mid thoracic. indentation appears to be within normal limits.
appear to be fairly symmetrical, so that is great news. So far, I've not seen anything concerning. I'm gonna go ahead and palpate the back, so let's percuss here with my reflex hammer. And again, looking for any notable differences. Of course you can let me know if any of this is painful. very normal. Okay. So I'm going to do the same test of your skin integrity here. So just stretching along various areas. Noting any loss in skin elasticity. Skin elasticity is very well intact. It does appear that you are still producing adequate collagen. Your elastin molecules appear to be working very well. I'm not noticing any areas that are more taut or less taut. Everything is pretty even kill.
That is good. Okay. So I want to do a test for neurological reflex. So similar to what I performed on your abdomen, I'm just going to test to see if your muscles react accordingly. I'm just going to brush across your skin here. I am getting normal reactivity here, which is a good sign. Good indication that there's nothing wrong neurologically. So I'd just like you to indicate whether or not you can feel that this is soft. Mm -hmm. Good. Any difference in the softness anywhere? So this here should feel just as soft here and here. And then conversely, this should feel very sharp. And it should feel the same sharpness everywhere. Okay, and then you should be able to tell the difference between these two here. sensation appears to be intact. Given that you are able to distinctly given that you are able to appropriately distinct between the two sensations. So somewhere here I'd like you to indicate whether or not you feel that this is cold. It should feel the same coldness. Good. Very good. Any difference from side to side here? Does that feel the same? Mm -hmm. Good. And no differences along your tattoo here. That all feels the same. Mm -hmm. to do a test of your body prominences, so you should feel vibration here. Vibration here. Mm -hmm. Here as well. And all along your spine you should feel Just the last one, so for make sure I didn't miss anything. Doesn't appear that was if your back pain is related to your abdominal discomfort. I guess you maybe just overexerted yourself. It could be a possible strain. Given that it is in your lower back, it is common amongst people to maybe just have overextended. If you were lifting something particularly heavy and using incorrect body mechanics, that could be a result of your back pain. I have seen in a rare case where abdominal bloating and distension can lead to discomfort in the lower back. So it kind of puts pressure on your tailbone and your lower spine, given that you're trying to accommodate for the bloating in your abdomen. So if you feel like your back hurts when you're bloated, then the two things are probably related. 
However, if you feel the lower back pain at a different time than your abdominal distension, then it is likely that you've just overexerted yourself physically. So when you're doing your elimination diet this week, I would like you to pay attention to see if there's any correlation between the two, okay? And then we will reassess when you come back in for your 14-day visit. As far as I can tell today, Jen, there is nothing outwardly going on with your back. So nothing that I'm seeing that is concerning. There's no signs of major dislocation. Not seeing any bulging of the discs. Doesn't appear as if you've, you know, have any sort of herniation or anything like that, which is all good news, okay? Okay. So I'm going to finish up on a couple of notes here. Um, I will give you a couple of minutes. Like I said, all of the information about the elimination diet will be in your patient portal, so you're welcome to log into that. And then go ahead and schedule your 14-day appointment up at the front desk, okay? Okay. All right, well, I hope you get to feeling better. Get home safely. Thank you. Thank you.